Well, welcome everyone. It's so wonderful to have you join with us at uh, Paramount Baptist Church uh, online. Uh, my name's Travis. Uh, this is my wife Kay. We're some of the pastors uh, here at PBC. And we've got a really great service for you uh, today. We've got Angie, our mother of three, who's going to lead us in a time of worship. We've got Cole, mother of two, who's going to open up the word for us today. And figured it was a good day to acknowledge that because it is, of course, Mother's, Mother's Day. Day! Happy Mother's Day, everybody, to all the mums. Uh, we just want to say how much we love you, how grateful to you we are. Uh, we're conscious that across the life of our church, there's all kinds of different mums. There's mums of little kids and mums of adult kids. Uh, there's spiritual mums, there's grandmums. Uh, and for all of you, we just want to celebrate and honour you today and just let you know how grateful to God we are for you. There are a number of people in our church who actually wrote in and shared with us what it is that they love and value about their mums. Uh, and we wanted to share a few of them with you now. So Kat Johnson wrote in about her mum, a characteristic I see in my mum that I'd like to emulate is her persistence in all things and her deep love for Jesus. And then Kat's kids wrote about her, we love our mum because she is beautiful and she loves us all the way to heaven. Uh, we had Shell writing about her mum, what I love about my mum is her creativity, her obsession with Brooke, and that she is always 110% supportive of me. Uh, a characteristic I see in my mum that I'd like to emulate is her servant heart and creative spirit, and also her ability to find a song to match every moment. Uh, obviously a story that goes along with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Emily wrote, a characteristic I see in my mum that I'd like to emulate is her devotion to her children. Kids experience a glimpse of the unconditional love of God through the parent-child relationship. And I hope to love my kids with the same devotion that my mom has shown to me and my sisters. Uh, and Emily's, Emily's daughter, McKady, wrote, I love mummy because she doesn't annoy me back when I annoy her. <laughs> and Jonah wrote, I love mummy because she's kind, amazing, sweet, loving and creative. Uh, we had Murray writing, um, what I love about my mom is her willingness to invest her time and her energy into people. Nicole wrote, a characteristic I see in my mum that I'd like to emulate is her selfless generosity towards sacrificing her time. We had the Jarrett kids um, chip in. A, a characteristic I see in my mum that I'd like to emulate is kindness. Mm -hmm. And Karen, kind Karen, I'm going to call you from now on. Uh, what I love about my mum is that she is not only my mum, but my friend. Beautiful. Uh, Amy wrote, what I love about my mum is that she loves people so fully and unconditionally. She's caring and nurturing to everyone, whether she's known you for years or just met you on the street. And how true is that? Mm. Uh, and the Elliot kids, um, speaking of Karina, said, what I love about my mum is that she is selfless. A characteristic I see in my mum that I'd like to emulate is being loving and kind. And what I love about my mum is that she is generous, giving and always wanting to be with people. And Karina, speaking of her mum, writes, something mum has taught me about following God is grace upon grace with joy. Beautiful. So happy Mother's Day, everyone. Uh, before Kay prays for mums, just want to um, issue an invitation. If you are a new here or visiting, um, you're not normally part of our Parramatta Baptist Church family, we'd just love to say, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, so feel free to fill in the contact form uh, that you can find on our website. It's linked uh, at the bottom of this video uh, as well. We would just love to hear from you. Uh, in the life of our church, we're about to jump into a, a new preaching series from next week uh, through the letter of 1 Peter. Uh, now there is a devotional guide that will accompany this series. Uh, so make sure you head across to the download section uh, of our website. It's been available on your e-newsletter as well if you get those. Uh, and download that because that starts this week. Uh, there are readings that will lead you up to Sunday where we'll preach on that passage. Uh, really encourage you all to jump on this. This is a great way to actually slow down and allow the Word of God to really um, speak into your lives uh, and into our lives as a community of faith. And the last thing is just a reminder and a thank you uh, to all of those who continue to partner with us uh, financially as a church. Uh, there are ways uh, that you can do that. Um, it, it's all in our e-newsletter or you can go to our, our website and find the Give Online tab. But we really appreciate yeah, just what gospel ministry that makes possible uh, mm -hmm. through the life of our local church. So before we enter a time of worship together, would you join us in praying? Let's pray. Lord God, Today we celebrate all the mums in our lives, our biological mothers, spiritual mothers, grandmothers, and all the women who have guided, taught, cared for, prayed for, and nurtured us in some way. Thank you for the gift of each one, for the devotion, sacrifice, and love that they've shown us. Thank you for the ways in which they've reflected your character. 
You are the perfect loving parent and we've seen your love and compassion, gentleness and strength reflected in their human expressions of motherhood. As many women gathered last Sunday online for the women's quarantine, it was a beautiful reminder of the wonderful women at PBC and the way they laugh, love and endeavour to represent you so faithfully. Thank you for their example and for the way they live their lives. We think of the mothers we know in all seasons of life, new mothers with babies, those with growing children, teenagers and young adults, empty nesters, grandmothers, single mothers and those mentoring and investing into younger men and women. No matter what season they're in, would you be the source of their strength? May they find wisdom, patience and perseverance in you for the tasks they face each day. For mothers who are alone today in this season where we can't physically gather together, we pray that they would especially sense how close you are to them. And for those for whom Mother's Day is difficult for so many reasons, we ask that they would experience your love and comfort in a real and rich and deep way. Father, as the world continues to change around us, we pray that as your people we continue to press into your unchanging nature. You are El Roy, the God who sees, Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, and Jehovah Nissi, our banner. Help us to keep you as our firm foundation and our hope in every season, no matter what each new day brings or what we hear on the news. And God, as we live our lives anchored in you, we pray that this hope would be obvious to the people around us and that we'd be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks us about it. Help us to be salt and light, sharing your goodness and truth with our family, friends and neighbours. We so desire to make you known so that others can experience being in relationship with you too. So God, right now, we fix our eyes on you again and we centre ourselves in your love. Whatever is weighing on our hearts and minds, we entrust you as we enter into this time of worship. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Hello, it's great to be with you today. And hasn't it been wonderful looking at some of the names of God over the last few weeks? Sadly, today is the last part of this series. As someone that is grieving the fact that my children have outgrown Sesame Street, it is with great joy that I can make a Sesame Street-like announcement this morning. Today's sermon is brought to you by the letter M. We're going to look at four names of God that all happen to start with the letter M. Megen, Metsuda, Migdal and Mekesh. Megen means shield, Metsuda means fortress, Migdal means strong tower and Mekesh means refuge. And Mekesh is often used in talking about taking refuge under God's wings. The Bible is full of references to God being our refuge, our tower, our fortress, including taking refuge under his wings. And this is particularly in the case of Psalms. David is responsible for writing many of the Psalms that use these names of God. David wasn't facing a pandemic like we are, but boy, was he facing many, many things from which he needed refuge and protection. David was facing countless battles with surrounding nations. He often faced wars where 40,000 men were on the opposing side. And quite often the surrounding nations joined forces to pose an even bigger threat to David and his army. David also faced danger and persecution from the very people that should have had his back. His father-in-law Saul tried to kill him on numerous occasions and David had to flee and go into hiding. David's wife Michal despised him when he worshipped God exuberantly in public and David's own son tried to kill him. David felt desperate and overwhelmed at times. So much going on and so many demands upon him. And David also felt the turmoil of his sin, both the earthly consequences of his sin and also the spiritual consequences of his sin. The emotional pain that went with it was profound. 2 Samuel 22 is a song that David wrote in response to God saving him. He states, the waves of death swirled about me, the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. And so then he sings, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge and my saviour. David knew the importance of protection and refuge. His life depended on it. And in God being our refuge, our protector, our strong tower and fortress, he acknowledges our need for refuge and protection. He acknowledges that we too face many things from which we require refuge. If we take a look at the scriptures, we can see that God provides protection and refuge from so many of the situations that we face. Firstly, he provides refuge and protection from our enemies. Our enemies are probably not going to be an army of 40,000 men and charioteers, but sometimes people wrong us, challenge us, make us feel unsafe or maybe unheard. In God, our refuge, we are loved. In God, our refuge, we are the children of the Most High. And in God, our refuge, we can be sure of who we are and our worth. In fact, in 2 Samuel 22, it says that God rescued David because he delighted in him. And God delights in you also. And our battles are also within the spiritual realm. Satan comes to steal and kill and destroy. And there are those days, aren't there, where we feel like it's our turn to be in the firing line. A day when everything goes wrong, particularly when you're trying to do God's stuff and be salt and light in the world. 
There was a weekend last year when Jamie was on park ministry and I had organised to catch up with a few people after church who needed some practical help and some encouragement. And on that weekend, both of our cars broke down, one in a very dangerous way and one that had never broken down in the 20 years that we've had it. It really felt like Satan was trying to stop Jamie and I doing what God had called us to do and being salt and light that weekend. How good is it to know though that we have spiritual armour and that God himself is our shield, our fortress, a strong tower and a place of refuge. God is there for us in our earthly battles as well as our spiritual battles. And God also provides refuge and protection from sin and shame. His love and sacrifice allow our transgressions to be blotted out, to be made clean and pure. In a body and a world that is corrupted by sin, we can be made new, restored and safe from the death that comes with sin. And because of who God is, and how that defines who we are, we also have refuge from the shame and guilt that comes with sin. In Psalm 24, it says, Those that look to God are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. God gives us refuge and protection from shame and its impact on our lives. And when God sets us free from sin and shame, we are free indeed. God also provides refuge from our fears and our worries. Psalm 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. The idea of a good fortress is that it is impenetrable, that it is so solid that even in the most intense of battles, those kept within the fortress can be safe. Our fears can be great in number, strong in intensity and can seem so true and inevitable. But God's fortress is strong, it is safe and it is bigger than any of our fears or worries. Psalm 46 proclaims, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. God is our ever-present help, which means that he is our refuge and protection in all of our battles whatever they are. God does not have a list of things he can protect us from, nor does he have a list of people that are worthy of protection. God is ever present and always faithful. I wonder what the things in your life are that you need protection and refuge from. No matter what they are, God is your refuge your strong tower, your fortress, and you can take shelter under his wings. The thing that I love about these names of God is that they demonstrate that God's protection and safety is both strong and nurturing. We have Megen, Shield, Mitsuda, Fortress, and Magdal, Strong Tower, and we also have the idea of God providing us refuge under the shelter of his wings, like a mother bird protecting her young. We have these images of strength and might and complete safety, impenetrable walls enclosing those that are to be protected. And we have the image of warmth and safety. Are you ready to see some cute pics? We have a God that envelops us with his love, his protection, and his image, so much so that we are in him. 
The Lord's provision of refuge, his shelter and protection and his safety is perfect. I don't know about you though, but sometimes for some reason, I run straight past the fortress. I know the strong tower is there, but I reach for something much less. I know how wonderful and perfect it is to be under God's wings, but my attention is drawn to something much more fleeting. For me, this might be an article or a podcast by an expert. It might be a long and drawn out thought process in my own head. It might be some comfort in food, or it might be a mindless Netflix series. God challenged me this year to make him my first point of call, to run to him first, not to turn to him when all my other options have run their course. His strength, not mine. God particularly challenged me to take every thought captive and instead of trying to find refuge in my own head and nitpick every thought to the nth degree and try to solve it all myself, he challenged me to take my thoughts and turn them into prayers. For example, to take the thought, God, how am I going to do this work that I have to do at home and homeschool my kids? To instead turn it into a prayer and say, Lord, help me to be able to do all my work and help me to be the mum I need to be for my kids right now. I can't do it on my own. Or rather than thinking, I hope that person understood what I was trying to say and things will be okay between us, to instead pray, God, may that conversation be a blessing and may things be strengthened between that person and me. Psalm 118 talks about taking refuge in God and not in people or authority or riches. It says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Don't get me wrong, people are great and I hold wise counsel and friends very dearly. But God's refuge is so perfect that that's where we need to head first. Allow Psalm 62 verse 5 to be your proclamation. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. We don't live in a time when physical fortresses are being used, nor are shields part of our daily attire. And most of us don't have the opportunity to see mother birds protecting their young. So we need to find some ways to take these beautiful names of God and make them real and incorporate them into part of our routine on a daily basis. So I just wanna finish with some ways that you can embrace these aspects of God's character and really take hold of them in your life. Firstly, repetition, repetition, repetition. Read all the passages that contain these names of God. Sing songs about them, memorize them, put, your, put them on your screensaver, put them up in your house, set reminders in your phone. To help you with some of this, I've put together a list of passages that include these names of God and you'll find this on the church website. Secondly, personalize it. Put your own name and circumstances into some of these passages, particularly around the things that you need refuge from. Here is my example, the Colleen version of some of Psalm 91. I, Colleen Alford, will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save me from all the ways that Satan tries to tear me down. 
particularly when I feel overwhelmed with all that I'm trying to do and be and when I feel attacked by others. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings I will take refuge. God's faithfulness will be my huge protective shield. I will not fear the unknown and what the future holds for me and my family. Nor will I fear the arrows and hurt-filled words that are flung in my sent places. I will not fear COVID-19 and nor will I be subject to the self-doubt and worry that can plague and destroy. If doing this is something that interests you, I've put a copy of Psalm 91 again on the website and there's some blank space next to the passage so that you can put in your own examples. The third way to bring this into our daily life is visualisation. Visualisation is one of my favourite ways to bring passages to light and it lends itself so well to these names of God. Visualisation is the process of creating a mental picture and putting yourself in it. You take a passage or some passages and read them and then you can use some visual stimuli or your own good imagination to add in all the details and create a rich picture in your head. Maybe you could visualise yourself on the run from the dangers or worries that you are facing and you get to a big stone fortress just in time. You open the iron door, you go in, you slam it shut, you're safe and you fall to the ground with relief. You have found your refuge. Or maybe if you're facing a tough situation, you could visualise God giving you a huge, big brass shield that protects you from anything that's about to be flung your way. There are lots of different options. You could do a visualisation as a one-off to really get your head around these names of God. Or maybe you could create for yourself a quick visualisation that you do each morning or any time you're about to face something difficult. On the website, I've uploaded some pages of photos that you could use as a springboard to create your own visualisations. Now, I know that many of you are looking at Kids Church Online, even if you're not a child. So you will know just how good Lynn and Morel are at using props. But can I let you in on a secret? Props are not just for kids. Props are a wonderful way to bring the Bible to life for adults as well. Use your senses and use some props to bring these names of God to life. One of my favourite youth group memories uh, took place in Steve and Kathy's lounge room. Yes, I've been around for a while. There was about eight of us there having small group and Steve was talking about this verse, this concept of Masuda and taking shelter under God's wings. And so we all scrunched up under someone's arms and then moved around while that person protected us. Can I tell you that that's when that passage got lodged in my brain and it hasn't moved since. So you can try that at home with your household. Please don't break any social distancing regime. Um, but those in your household, you can give it a go. Or another idea is um, to get a big soft blanket and put it around your shoulders, signifying that you are under God's wings and you are in safety and in refuge. Or another idea, when you've got a freshly made bed and the sheets are nice and tight, wiggle your way in and rest in the image of being enveloped by God surrounded by his love and his goodness and protection. The fifth idea to make this real and part of your routine is to choose and then practice making God your default position. Like I spoke about earlier, God, our shield, our tower, our fortress, our refuge is perfect. And we don't want to bypass what God has provided for a second best option. This will be a daily 
and a moment-by-moment -moment decision and practice. And finally, allow these words and images to lead you into praise and gratitude. In so many of the Psalms that talk about the dangers that David faced and talk about God being our refuge, our fortress and our shield, they then led into praise for God. Worship is a place of refuge and it allows us to focus on God and glorify him in that place. Let's praise God now. Lord God, it is so incredible that you are our fortress, our strong tower, our shield and our refuge. Thank you for being our refuge and our protector. Thank you for keeping um, us under your wings. Thank you for giving us your safety and your strength, particularly at the moment when Things feel so unsure and uncertain in our world. Lord, we want to say you are a good God and we love you. Please help us to take these aspects of your amazing character and hold them dear and live them out, Lord. Amen.
thank you so much for joining with us today. Uh, I trust that you've been blessed and encouraged in your walk with God. Um, big thank you to Cole for opening up the word and just pointing us once again to that magnificent truth that God is our refuge. Um, if you'd like to talk to someone about what that might mean for you or like prayer, uh, do please reach out to the pastoral team uh, through the contact form or, or email us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and just a reminder as well that those resources that Cole spoke of in her sermon are, are available on our website, uh, as is our 1 Peter devotionals, which kick off from this week. Uh, so bless you uh, from Travis and Kay in our lounge room to your lounge room. Uh, we pray that God has met you and will continue to walk with you with whatever the week holds. Bless you and we'll see you next time.